welcome everybody to uh, the future, Connect to Your Future Conference. My name is Sylvia Unwin. I'm a full-time faculty here at Bellevue Community College. And um, I also want to welcome everybody, I've already said that, but also to thank again the Boeing Company for their generous support and especially having Jerry Bunce, Dave Halverson, and James Westfall help us create this conference without their enthusiasm and commitment we wouldn't have been able to accomplish this feat, having all of these different panelists come and speak. Um, let me just kind of give you the, what's going to be happening here. Each panel will have 10 minutes, and in this first session, the panel will be Dave Kasich from uh, Boeing, and also with Dave will be Abigail Cook from Concurrent Technologies. So they will each have 10 minutes to speak, and then afterwards it's gonna be open to questions from the floor. Uh, at the end of the session, please fill out your evaluation forms. There's also going to be a raffle, and that will also be at the end of the first session and also one at the end of the second session. We also are um, reminding everybody, for those who haven't done already, to vote. Please don't forget to vote. And then also when the questions are coming um, out from the audience for recording purposes, I will be repeating them. Now to make some very brief introductions, uh, Dave Kasich from the Boeing Commercial Airline Airplane Group is an architect there, and one of his um, works that he was doing earlier this year was developing a basis for a new computing system architecture for the use of wireless technology on the Everett 7E7 factory and served as a co-chair of the Wireless Technology Advisory Group. I kind of asked him if he would speak about um, wireless and graphics incorporated all together, and he told me that if he did, he would probably have to be canceled. So I guess we're not going to hear about that. His detailed uh, technical knowledge lies in user interface software and 3D computer graphics. Oh, and I was supposed to give a brief interview. Sorry about that. And then we also have Abigail. She currently works at Concurrent Technologies. And then uh, Dr. William Erdley. He's an associate professor at the Washington of University in Bothell. And over next to Abigail is Jeanette Jarvis, who is in the security systems product uh, at Boeing. So we'll start off with uh, Dave Kasich. Come and speak. Good morning. Hope all of you are well and at least semi-awake semi so far. Um, so first thing, I always get teased by my desktop because it's the clutter version of the desktop. Okay, I work on my computer pretty much like the same way that I work at my, on my personal desk at home and in the office. And it's the archeological form of organization. The things that are oldest always have a tendency to pop to the top. So if you'll bear with me for that. And I know you've been encouraged to vote by everybody who's spoken so far. I am no different on that regard. And I get to give you a first pop quiz. Um, how many of you have watched any of the 3D computer animation films that have been issued by Pixar or any of those companies? What have the rest of you been doing? <laughs> okay, you're, that's, uh, that's become very commonplace in terms of 3D computer graphics. Um, the other thing is, how many of you are gamers? There are a few who admit that. Somebody who plays video games, computer games of various types. Yeah, okay, the hands get much more, much more exciting now. <laughs> okay, I know who you guys are. The third question is, how many of you know how to do text messaging on your cell phones? Okay, all three of these are going to come into play in the little talk that I'm going to give here. And I'm going to talk about communications com complexity in computers. I think many of you probably listened to Rick Stevens' talk about communications. I'm going to talk a little bit about how communications has a tendency to be a technical problem as well as a problem of interpersonal relationships. And so what I want to give you is a sense of why communications is important between you and technology as well as interpersonal sorts of things. We can do all sorts of things with moving bits around. Somebody asked about convergence in the first session. And what that basically means is, hey, you know, we want everything to ship around and we want everybody to have all the information that's possible immediately at the tip of their fingers. OK, 
okay, all the time. I'm going to talk about a specific problem that goes back to the Pixar point. What happens when you're dealing with physical products that have 3D data that gets really complex? Let me give you a couple of examples. One of them, obviously, is one of the products that we make at the Boeing Company. Uh, I'm currently involved with the 77 program, as Sylvia said. And we're doing the whole thing as a 3D structural design. This is the 747 line in Everett. We also have the 77 being built all over the place, okay, being designed. These are current Boeing locations. And we also build things internationally like the International Space Station. So we get to extremely complex digital products. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that we use to support all of that computing infrastructure uh, that literally goes around the world. Uh, if you take a look at some of the, the figures on this chart, you'll get an idea of what the scale is. And we're starting to talk about gigas and teras and peta in terms of the words that go in front of things like bytes and messages and the like. We're just dealing with an extraordinary amount of complexity. And one of the things that I work on at Boeing is, is trying to use visual techniques to communicate that complexity more clearly. And there are a lot of ways to see complexity. This is where the cell phone question comes in. Take a look at the variety of different devices that are on the second row of this particular chart. Okay, you're looking at things that range from wristwatches. Anybody have a Dick Tracy wristwatch here? And you can do everything, send email and all that kind of stuff. I've, I can't see it, let alone operate it. If you think about cell phones and the number of you who know how to text message, you're a different category of person than the type of person that I am. I don't know how to do, ten, how to do typing, touch typing on a 10 key cell phone keypad. There are significant differences in the way we interact with all of these devices that are essential to be able to work with complex problems in complex environments. Okay, and that's the whole point of this particular guy. Let's look at a typical problem. Here's a problem that, that happens to occur in a, in a commercial airplane environment. Uh, the idea is for a user to find that particular part in that scene. Okay, which is kind of a cutaway version of a, 70, of a 777. Uh, it represents something like 350 million different triangles. And part of the problem is that, we, that we're looking at computing technology that deals with extremely complex problems in a, in a non-trivial way. One of the projects that I've been working on recently, and I'll show you a little, some of the results, is how to take this particular image, the, 70, the 777, and all of the triangles and be able to interact with it in real time. And I'll show you a little video clip of some work that's gone on in that, work, in that regard. So there's the challenge. How can I interact, let a person interact or a group of people interact with that airplane in real time? The cool part about the visual communication channel is that a person can actually look at that complex an image and get meaning out of it. You understand clearly that there are wings, that there's a fuselage, there's a tail, there are engines, but our computing technology currently can't quite keep up with the demand that the complexity of our products have. So that's one of the things that we're working on. There are a couple of different approaches to this. All of you gamers out in the audience, you get to play with something called the Z-Buffer algorithm. Anybody, anybody hear of that before? There's one, good. When you buy a, uh, a, uh, an NVIDIA card or something like that, a graphics accelerator, you're buying a Z-Buffer algorithm, and the rate of progress on those cards is greater than the rate of progress on the Intel chips that you buy for general purpose computers. They're being looked at as, being, as ways of working, working computational problems rather than using a general purpose CPU. There's another technology called ray tracing. I'll give you a little bit of background into both of those. Anybody here of ray tracing before? 